$14,428 a month of retirement income, which may leave you short, says Vanguard. <laughs> so my man Alex writes in, and uh, let's just share with you this. This is this is classic. I uh, <laughs> So 14000 times my trusted calculator times 12 is uh, 168000 a year, and Vanguard says that's going to leave you short, which may leave you short because it'll never go on the – the uh okay so i said so here's my man i said uh my man alex says hey uh when we finally do meet josh can you help us live on 173,000 a year that vanguard doesn't think that is enough <laughs> i said <laughs> um and i said oh sorry alex i think you're beyond saving uh you're gonna have to find a uh, beyond saving literally i'm not gonna be able to rescue your retirement plan you're gonna find somebody else uh, i said how in the world did they come up with this he goes, option one, probably uh, they, we entered our gross income roughly 250 at the time before my wife came down with the, uh, the, the C and went on disability. And Vanguard is looking at some percentage of that. So I think that's probably right. So we're going to take 250 and we're going to times that by 0.8. And lo and behold, that gives us maybe they're doing 250 times by 0.75, 250 times by 0. 0.7. There you go. Two, they're using 70% of their pre-retirement income. They're using, and uh, that's where they're getting that 14,000 bucks a month. Uh, let's see, of course, that rule of thumb completely ignored the fact that we were living in California and maxing out our 401ks plus catch-up contributions. Our take-home pay was never anywhere near 14,000. And then, but then he says, this is funny, man. This is the kind of guys I love working with. He goes, or they're taking seven more years, several more years of bite inflation into account, and a loaf of bread will cost $100 a, a blow by the time I retire. <laughs> I salute you, sir. That's good stuff, man. That's funny, Alex. Anyway, so Alex says, basically, we've never ever lived on $14,000 uh, take home pay, and yet Vanguard is saying we're going to need that. You see how the absurdity of this, you know, pre, you know, percentage of pre-retirement income is. The whole thing's freaking stupid. I just, I, I, all right. Let me show you again. I'm gonna share with you the book. This book right here, the Essential Retirement Guide by uh, Frederick Vitesse or Vitesse. I'm not sure how you say it. You got if you don't get this you're wrong. That's all there is to it. So, all right. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, in the previous chapter, I use a few examples to show that a surprisingly small percentage of our gross income is spent on personal consumption during our working lifetimes. It is important to formulize those results to determine the average percentage, especially close to retirement age, because that is going to lead us to a better retirement income target. We haven't seen enough. Oh, let's see. When you're making ongoing investments, I just lost it, in your home, mortgage payments, and the future generation, children, they crowd out personal consumption and thus lower your retirement income target. Retirement savings is a special type of investment, and, and that has a double effect. Not only does it reduce personal consumption while you're making it, hence lowering your retirement income target, but it also generates retirement income to a meet to, to satisfy at least part of that target. If you make no such investments, i.e. you're a single renter without children, your personal consumption and hence your retirement income target will tend to be higher. Some people have freed themselves of mortgage payments and child raising expenses by the time they reach retirement age. If so, they can boost their personal consumption in their last few years before retiring. This will increase their retirement income tar target, but not dollar for dollar. Because some of their increased consumption is one-time items that will not carry into retirement. <sighs> Viewed from the 30,000 fit point of view, the investments you make during your work and lifetime, paying off a mortgage, raising children, and saving for retirement take up a very substantial amount of your gross income. And in the process, they depress your personal consumption for a considerable length of time. Basically, the freaking 70% rule is based on single renters with no children. That's where they came from. Don't use it. It's stupid. Anyway, so get that book and you'll say, oh, this makes sense. Everything you've been taught is a lie. I will see. I, I think old Alex will be okay.